You've heard of truly wireless earbuds, but how about an open wearable stereo? This is some pretty cool compostable packaging here. Oladan sponsored this video to check out these, the OWS Pros. Now, none of this goes in your ear. That would be kind of a stretch, if you know what I mean, but it goes around your ear so you can hear other stuff. I'm very interested to see how they fit, how they feel, if they stay on, how they sound. Uh, but first, gotta look at what's in the box. People enjoying life. A Little bit of info about the company, plus apparently there's a suede carrying case, which looks kind of sick. Also have a bit of a quick start guide here. Tells you about the touch controls. Yeah, this, this thing just keeps going. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to all this. this is easy stuff. I don't need to look at this thing. What about charger and stuff? You get a cable, USB-C to A. That is a nice twist tie wrap. That is like a machine. A machine did that one. That's all you need. USB-C in the back of this charging case. All right, so let's look at this charging case and what's inside it. The case is this big and this heavy. Wow, 100 grams on the dot. What about the buds themselves? 27 grams. And you know, in the case you don't like to do math, there you go. The case looks very clear, like there's no way you're gonna be confused as to how these go in. You can't, you can't screw this up. Which actually I think is something that matters. I don't like fumbling with the case. It's very lightweight, well, you saw that. Contact points for charging at the top of it, indicator for left and right. Very basic, simple. This is what it sounds like. And on the front, it's got some indicator lights, four indicator lights for battery life. I'll give you guys a little pocket test in my Lulu's here. Whoop. Drop it down. All right, let's look at the things themselves. They come in lots of fun colors. This is the most subtle color, the kind of gray on black two-tone. But some of these other colors are like, boom. Like, look at that green. The reason it's two-tone is because half of it, the part that is in contact with your head, is this soft touch silicone. It feels very nice. And there's just a lot of doodads on the outside of this. That looks like the charging contacts for the case. There's a little vented grill here. I think sound is actually gonna be coming out of there. Then there's there's more vents on this side. And then some, some holes. Those are gonna be your microphones. There are six microphones on here. They're gonna be collecting noise from the outside to block wind sound during calls. And there's actually some active noise canceling with these guys, believe it or not, as well, even though they do go on the outside of your ear. I see a little power button icon there. Uh, and then this is a, a button. Like, it doesn't really click like a tactile button, except for the sound. It looks like they have some, some amount of play for all the different heads that they're designed to go on. It's funny, you can, you can tell looking at this thing like, yep, that's for your ear. All right, let's get these things on the body. This has a little indicator that says it's the right side, so I guess this goes behind the ear and that just sits like that. All right, shoop. Man, that's like crazy fast to put on. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. It feels kind of counterintuitive because you're so used to like drilling these things in and like getting that seal. Um, no seal here. You could totally go skiing, ride a motorcycle, uh, would they fit in a helmet? I think they might. Um, and other activities where you want to listen to music but you always feel a bit weird, trepidatious, having a seal in your ear, these really just let you have the elements around you. Have a conversation, go hiking. A big one for me is going to bed with music on and not wanting to be that kind of parent who's like, hey spouse, you listen for them crying in the night. With these, I can, I can have both. I can have my cake and eat it too. I, you could definitely have your head down on a pillow this way. Can you do, can you be a side sleeper? Can we get a pillow in here? <laughs> Sweet. Let's see what that's like. Uh, probably wouldn't recommend sleeping directly on them like that. Wow, that camera angle from the top. <laughs> I think you could easily work out in these. Like if you're dropping down to lay on a bench, they feel pretty in there. They do, they put a little bit of pressure downward on the back of your ear, you know. So it's like normal earphones in that they weigh something, but the place that they put that weight is just a little bit of a different place. I wanna see how they sound and how they interact, so let's get the phone going. This is the home page of the app. You got a visualization of the headphone. What do you call these, earphones? Battery life indicator for left and right. And what is this? Okay, here's where you configure what the controls do, and there's a separate page for music and for calls. 
That's cool. And I guess, wow, you can just turn it, all the touch controls off altogether if you want. So it's not really a button. It is a pressure sensitive touch control with micro sensing technology. So let's see what that does. Right now a single squeeze is set to play and pause, but you can change it to do nothing or to be next and previous and volume up and down. Cool, I think it basically looks like, oops, you tap each one of these to be adjusting it and they all have the same option inside, which is my preference. When I was looking at the manual earlier, I wondered if it mattered which ear you did these commands on, but the volume up and down is actually just sliding forward and back on the one, on either earbud, so that is cool. That said, I don't know how double squeeze can be both next and previous. That might be left and right. So I'm gonna set, set it up assuming that and I'll put voice assistant on triple squeeze. Let's go. Oh, I haven't heard this one in a bit. That's a good song. Okay. This is a weird sensation. I understand now why they call it a stereo, a wearable stereo. It's a very ambient, ethereal, open-backed sounding. Cool. Uh, now let's try the controls. Where do I press? I heard the click noise, it paused. Click noise, play, same over here. Cool. All right, so how do I go back? Do I double tap on this? Yes. Double tap here. Next song. That it, that's it, we solved it. It is left and right. And then for the swipes, the part that you swipe is same as the button. Right there. Oh man, these go loud. Back to the app, there's an equalizer looking button. So you got default, surging bass, pure voice, and customized by personal taste. Click on that. It doesn't really look like a button, but it is. And then what do they give us? Low, middle, and high. Eight knobbies is actually pretty good. Sometimes you get only three knobs. Sometimes you get five. Eight, I'm pretty happy with this. 125 hertz is the lowest one though. Highest 16, sound balance. Oh, crazy. Just like any other stereo, like in your car, you can do sound balance where it's like heavier to left and right. That's actually pretty interesting because most people don't have equal ability to hear in both ears. But I've never seen that in an app before. That's sweet. Other tabs of the app looks like there's a login page. I haven't logged in yet. So evidently you don't need to log in, which is great. That was enjoyable. Let's check out the graphs. Our first chart is a frequency response graph using the default sound profile. And you can see it has really great adherence to our target curve throughout the mid range. It's overemphasized in the highs, which is gonna make it sound really exciting. And one thing I noticed when I was listening is I could hear a lot of like the hip hop callbacks, like the, the other Snoop Dogg voice tracks going back and forth more than I'm used to hearing, um, but it was cool. And then on the low end, in the, in the deep bass, in the sub bass, it's really underemphasized, but it's actually overemphasized around the between 100 and 200 hertz. In the surging bass profile, you basically just get even more of that. The range is a little wider. It looks like maybe 90 to 250 hertz. You get a bigger bump that's almost 10 dB. So this will be due to their new second generation bass algorithm that increases the dynamic power to up the bass. You can see there's a limit though with just physics. like. The driver is so far from your ear and there's no seal in your air canal. So there's only so much they can do. Sam said he was actually pretty impressed with the frequency response of these headphones given the constraints they're up against with this, this design, which is definitely gonna have its limitations. Then you've got the pure voice presets, which is just really nice in the mid range, less of a bass hump. The next chart is Volume dependent EQ, which is a feature of these headphones. What it does is it makes the sound more consistent across volume levels because our ears are more sensitive to treble and bass. So as you turn the volume up, the treble and bass actually get muffled down a little bit and that gives it more consistency across the volume range. Next we have a chart for their focus mode, which is kind of like active noise canceling, but you can see that it only affects a pretty narrow band here in the mid range. Unique New York. This is, that's what I say when I answer the phone. If I ever call you, <laughs> you're gonna hear like, Red leather, yellow leather, other warm up tongue twister things. I like a cold open on a phone call. Yeah, it sounds like a Bluetooth mic. But you know, it's trade offs. It looks like they have put a lot of attention and care into trying to make these sound as good as possible while still offering you this open design um, that gives you the safety benefits and, you know, convenience benefits too, of being able to hear people talking to you. Maybe you're at work and you want to get away with having headphones in, but you don't want to look like one of those F off people with the headphones and the sunglasses and the hat and don't talk to me. 
that's worth something. Now let's talk battery life. It's actually pretty huge, I would say. 16 hours on these and then 58 hours with the charging case. As far as ingress protection, they are IPX4 rated, which is very typical for, I would say the vast majority of truly wireless earbuds. Um, and what that means is there's no, no measured protection for dust. The X means they didn't measure that. And then the four means it'll do splashes. So you're gonna be good in the rain. Uh, I would not swim with them. Splashes. And these are using Bluetooth 5.3. They've got multi-point, so you can connect up to two devices and switch between them very easily. And all this can be yours for 230 US dollars. I wore those for quite a while and no discomfort. Maybe a small amount of warmth, but nothing compared to actually on ear or over your headphones. Check them out at the link below, guys. And thanks, Olance, for sponsoring this video. And I wanna hear from y'all in the comments whether this is like, yes, like they, they speak to you, like you've been waiting for this design. And why not watch another short circuit video? It's really good for the algorithm.